Um, yes, yeah, so this is our BLS webinar um, here. Um, we're actually addressing an audience um, in South Africa to understand the various um, outbound um, migration opportunities available. Um, we're pleased to announce that on this webinar, we have um, our dear friend, Mr. Asra Esop, who is uh, obviously an established um, attorney um, that works for a, a, a firm called Russell's, um, very reputable. Um, who will be discussing the current status of South Africa and why many South Africans are looking for outbound migration. Um, I'll be asking Ashraf a number of questions to talk about the current status of um, South Africa. Then of course, um, the highlight for today's webinar is um, we've got Mariam Mansouri, who's also a business development director of Range Development. We had the pleasure of having Miriam in a number of roadshows in a number of countries, but also outlining to the South Africans the huge opportunities that are available in regards to Grenada and the E2 visa. Um, of course, we want to um, give a basic understanding of the various different programs. Um, we do understand a lot of people are looking at uh, outbound migration However, we want to make sure that they have a step-by-step -step guide in regards to uh, investment immigration. So just everyone's aware, we are in different time zones. I'm in London, um, so it's actually um, five o'clock here. Um, and obviously, Mr. Ashraf Esop is in Johannesburg. And I guess it's 7 p.m. over there. And then yeah. obviously, we have Mariam as well, who's in the wonderful UAE, um, Dubai and obviously uh, 9 p.m. over there. So thank you, Mariam. It's, you probably had a very long day. And um, to add to your um, schedule of activities is this webinar. So uh, I guess we'll start off basically if, um, you know, Ashraf, if you can introduce yourself and Rousseau's the attorney and talk about your firm and the work that you've done. Um, and inquiries you're getting in regards to uh, immigration, because this seems to be quite a hot topic at the moment, not just within South Africa, but also in Africa, you know. So would you kindly just give us an overview of your, of your expertise and of course your firm? Okay, Sam, thank you very much for the opportunity and welcome to everyone tonight. Um, so Rousseau's is a well-established company in Johannesburg. We have various divisions. I'm head of litigation and immigration. So we do everything, my division does everything from permitting to internal reviews and appeals, as well as litigation. So I have the pleasure of appearing as counsel in these matters in the high court when one takes it for either review or trial or motion proceedings. So inward bound is an area where we have specific expertise. We understand the act, the regulations. Uh, I serve on the subcommittee of the Law Society of, um, uh, well, now it's called Law Society, of, not Law, Law Society of South Africa. It's, we've, we've now merged and it's, we're all known as legal practitioners. So it's the Legal Practices Council. The subcommittee is immigration. I'm one of the people that has been uh, serving there for a number. So we have the distinction of being able to interpret legislation and write opinions. Uh, I have appeared on a number of uh, radio and TV shows. And uh, yeah, Rousseau's appears to be respected very highly in that regard. With regard to inward bound migration, we serve a number of clients, every, everyone from corporates right down to refugees and asylum seekers. Um, by far, the bulk of our practice is taken up uh, in the field of permitting and visas and permanent residence and um, citizenship as well. Uh, there are times when you could lose your citizenship or be, de be deprived of it. So in that area, I would suggest that we, we have a fairly good idea of what's, uh, what's going on. Amongst our corporate clients, we're able to advise on the various kinds of visas that their corporates might need to come in or their managers or their staff. And in this regard, there's a number of challenges. 
by the department. Uh, there's not always consistency uh, of rulings and interpretations. And again, we are able to successfully navigate these things and assist our clients. With regard to output of outward bound migration, uh, it is of interest to me now to see that there's a huge demand uh, from a lot of South African, from a broad, broad spectrum of people, ordinary people, skilled persons, unskilled persons, corporates, students, uh, a range of people wanting to explore the possibilities of A, migration, and B, a second passport uh, in uh, a number of other destinations. So there's been lots and lots of uh, inward bound um, delegations. Uh, various parties would come with various offerings. Some will offer you EB5, which is an investment, uh, citizenship by investment into the US. Uh, there's others like the Portuguese golden visas, although the trouble in Spain today might unsettle some people headed towards uh, Europe. Uh, the news of uh, recession in South Africa, the poor economic climate, crime, but also people just wanting to have a better life and a better career. A number of challenges facing professionals, especially doctors, is the looming national health insurance, where the government will determine what they're going to pay you for your specialized services. So the guarantee of high income for them is now under threat. They're also looking for various destinations. So I'm very glad that in this webinar, you are, you are co-hosting Maria Mansouri, who's got a very dynamic program in the Caribbean, which has got a number of benefits, but I'll let her unpack that. Yeah. And Sam, you have 21 other countries that you can suggest yeah. uh, various entries. Uh, it's, it's on the pamphlet. And yeah, I don't want to take too much time. I'd like the, the viewers to join us as soon as possible. Yeah. So we've actually had a few more um, attendees um, join um, this webinar. Um, I'm Sam Hussain, um, Director of BLS. Um, we specialize in educating um, families and HIs that look out for um, residency or citizenship in various different countries. Uh, we also just had briefly uh, Mr. Ashraf Esop talk about um, Russell's um, and its attorney, a reputable attorney that deals with outbound migration as well as inbound migration throughout South Africa and Africa. And of course, um, we'll get the pleasure of um, hearing from Mariam Mansouri, who's the Business Development Director of Range Development. So the people that have actually um, joined um, just now the webinar, um, we're going to be basically just cover a bit more about um, the current situation in South Africa, why there's a big demand for um, outbound migration and how Mariam's um, program and also the luxury re resort can be a very popular choice to a, num a number of HIs and South Africans. Um, you know, Ashraf, you were just basically talking about um, people in South Africa are aware of some of the programs, for example, Portugal. Um, do a lot of do you get a lot of inquiries for EB5? Because the reason why I'm asking for EB5 because that is quite connected to E2 as well as Grenada because that, that is the theme of this um, webinar. So, uh, you know, why do you think a lot of people in South Africa are familiar with the Portuguese program? Well, there's been a lot of marketing of the Portuguese program and uh, the same with the EB5s. But I think by far uh, the Portuguese program has received prominence. And I think that's part of it is there have been limited success stories. When I say limited, I, as an attorney, have come across a number of cases where the people have not got what they paid for. Uh, they did not uh, even anticipate that this is not a legitimate or a proper investment. Let me qualify that. You could be promised a palace and then you end up with a hut. That's, and without exaggeration, some of the stories I've read. So to come back to why they choose Portugal, it's A, look, we have nothing in common with the language or the country, except, I mean, we do have a Portuguese population here, but they won't be looking for migration. They'll probably get it through uh, inheritance or through, uh, you know, family uh, ties or whatever the case is. Uh, and the neighboring countries has got uh, two Portuguese territories, Mozambique and Angola. I know a number of Portuguese speaking nationals 
have decided to go back and invest in Portugal because while Southern Africa is a very, very commercially viable, um, they, do, they do face challenges of violence and you know, they just want safety. So by and large, people will be looking for another destination for the primary purpose of safety. But you know, it's not prescribed because anyone could go for a number of reasons. You could get married, you may want to invest overseas and earn uh, yeah. as a man hedge against the, the, the weakening rent or the weakening economy. You may want to have a better opportunity to study at a European institution, university, or join the European Union and move around and establish yourself in various other destinations. So Portuguese, the Portuguese Golden Visa have been really, really punted on across the media, lots of articles in the lawyers' magazines, lots of lawyers saying that their clients are looking into it. But that's basically the landscape for Portugal. Yeah, so we, we understand Portugal is well marketed, and that was one of the reasons why BLS um, decided to enter into the South Africa market, because so people who understand there are various different programs out there for them, not just Portugal, you know, um, there are the US EB5 programs, the Greece called the visa, the various other residency programs, as well as now, of course, we, and Maren's going to talk a bit about, about Grenada. Um, and um, one of the things we found, Ashraf, was the people that really want to migrate, they really want to migrate now. They don't want to wait one year, two years, three years down the line. Um, the situation is, it's not wonderful and great in South Africa. You know, unfortunately, we've had a lot of um, investors that have kind of personally about, you know, the huge crime, uh, a lot of the, you know, many, um, you know, activities, many violence, many riots that they've had to face, um, rape, you know, unfortunately. And one of our, my question is, why are you waiting for these unforeseen incidents to take place? You know, robbery, gunpoint, shooting, et cetera, et cetera, when there are options out there for you. And that's why we're bringing on to these webinars the best expert advice and the best people to provide that solution. So, you know, we talked about EB-5 and, you know, one of the biggest concerns a lot of people had about EB-5 and other different programs is they don't want to wait. The people that want to migrate, they want to migrate in approximately in three to six months. Yes? Yeah, correct. I think the EB-5 biggest drawback is, number one, the capital amount. And there's been lots of talk about that capital amount being bumped up to double to about 900,000 US. And then they're really... I think people need to know what the capital amount is. Currently, at the moment, the capital amount is 500 US dollars. And after 500,000 500, US dollars, which is, can you just roughly explain in local, in local currency, in rands, how much is that? Uh, conservatively, times by 15. Okay. So 15 times 5. 40, 45. It's about 7.5. No, must be more. Yeah. We see things about 7.5 million rand. So that, that is a lot, um, you know, so it's actually a, a really... Um, I mean, to liquidate your assets, to, to obtain 7.5 million rand, just the capital amount, and then you've got to get all the permissions to remove them. Uh, so, so that capital amount, for me, would, would only will only encourage only a few investors. The second downside to EB-5, I'm not, I'm not knocking EB-5, I'm just saying my personal observation, is the, is the time limit it takes to, op, to obtain your, your, your residence and then ultimately your citizenship. And then you're looking at investing all this money and it's locked in for at least five to seven years. And then you have to wait to see if the guarantee payment comes back. So I think there's a number of, for me, um, challenges uh, and unless somebody is extremely serious about what they want a high quality product in the u.s um you know and and they have all of that capital and it's sanitized and it's uh, declared etc etc you must be really determined to get into the u.s on eb5 i understand there are other ways that you you have you have um, the ability to advise people differently mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, I think this is the, 
throw him into the conversation because I know she's uh, edging to um, talk about the Grenada program. So just for the attendees to understand, we have Mary Mansouri. Um, she's a business development director of Range Development, um, and she's also an, which is an international property de developer for luxury resorts um, in the Caribbean. Range um, Development's flagship project is the Park Hyatt St. Kitts. It's open to guests since uh, 1st of November 2017. It's a luxury and wonderful resort, uh, which I get to see um, actually this weekend. And also, you know, just Mariam has actually a first class honors degrees in mass communications, media, PR from the University of Sharjah in UAE. And um, actually, um, she's brilliant i've seen her present she actually explains to investors precisely how the grenada program works as well as the various other different program so Mary, please i'm sure people are waiting to hear about the grenada program if you can explain to people about the grenada program and how it compares and why you're doing this uh, in a nutshell. sure thank you so much sam um first and foremost hi everybody we are range development, and what we do is that we develop five-star hotel properties in countries that grant you a citizenship, in a nutshell. Um, we develop the hotels ourselves, the land is owned by us, and we get a five-star international operator to take over once we've delivered the property as per their standards. As Ashraf very nicely pointed out the problems with the EB-5, it also, I wanted to add to it that you don't get citizenship. And once you do get citizenship, seven years or whatever it is onwards, it's a very, very lengthy process. And that was very well said. One of the highlights of Caribbean citizenships is that your citizenship is granted within five to six months of when you start your process. Um, we have a wonderful track record. I am proud to say that Range Developments is the only company in the world that has ever delivered a five-star hotel development under a citizenship program. Um, there's a lot of programs out there and as wonderful as they all are, no one's yet been able to deliver the investment side of it. You do get your citizenship in around six months, but then it takes around 30, 35 months for the hotel to get built. We have St. Kitts and Nevis. We have the Park Hyatt Hotel, as Sam just mentioned. It was, no, it was uh, named by Forbes and CNN Travel and Condé Nast as being the number one hotel of the Caribbean. And we have moved on and recently just delivered our Kempinski Hotel in the Commonwealth of Dominica. We've moved on to the third island in the Caribbean, which is Grenada. And Grenada has all the advantages of all the other Caribbean islands that we have delivered our hotels in with a couple of advantages. So the Grenadian citizenship gives a client as well as their family. So all the dependents within their family include mother, father, husband, wife, children that are not married under the age of 30, as well as siblings that have never been married, don't have children. And there's no age limit on the siblings. So one investment will grant citizenship to a family of say five, six, seven, depending on how many children, siblings they have. Parents are above the age of 55 and have to be dependent on the main applicant. Um, from the day that you start the process, it takes around six months to get your citizenship. You get it within any jurisdiction that you live in, in this case being South Africa. Um, you also get an equity share in the hotel. So the hotel in Grenada is going to be a six census hotel, which was just recently bought out by the Intercontinental Group. And um, they have a specialty in um, resorts. So you don't see them in a lot of cities. So like Dubai doesn't have one. However, Salala in Muscat has one because they're very resort. Um, Grenada's citizenship gives a client visa-free access to around 130 countries, the significant countries being the United Kingdom. You can stay in the United Kingdom up to six months without needing a visa, which obviously makes your life, if you want to set up shop in the UK, a lot easier in the long run, as you are a selected Commonwealth class. The other uh, visa-free options is Schengen Europe, 
so you can travel to all of Europe. And this is not visa on arrival. We have a lot of clients that ask us, so is it visa on arrival? Do we fill it up when we're there? Is it an e-visa? It's not, it's visa free. So you just pass through as if you were from any of those Schengen countries. Um, Hong Kong, Singapore as well, and Russia and China. These are the visa-free countries. Additionally, Grenada is the only Caribbean country and currently one of the few countries that you can actually invest in their citizenship program and get E2 visa access. Now, um, because the EB5, very similar to Portugal, as Ashraf said, has been advertised and marketed so very, very much, people are very familiar with that and not so much with the E2. However, annually 10,000 EB5 visas are issued and granted to people, 40,000 E2 visas are. However, E2 is only, again, on selected nationalities and citizenships. Grenada is lucky enough to have one. Can you just explain, because I, I, I think this is really important. Every year, only 10,000 visas get allocated for EB5. And um, then we do understand there's a waiting list, because I actually have a question here, was people are actually starting to write messages where they don't feel safe for their business and their family, and they want to go to the US. Um, so this is one of the things that we touched earlier on about how people want it uh, within three to six months. So that's, can you just explain a bit more about obviously, um, you know, the restrictions and how, and how many approvals are in Gren um, Grenada? Because I guess that's what sure. people... Sure. So as Sam pointed out, it's 10,000 EB-5s are granted a year as opposed to the 40,000 E-2s. Um, once you get your Grenadian citizenship, which takes five to six months from the day that we submit your file, um, you get your citizenship, you get a certificate of naturalization, you also get an equity share in the hotel. So you put that to one side. As soon as you get that, you're eligible to apply for an E-2 visa. An E-2 visa takes anywhere between six weeks to around 12 weeks to be issued. So it's a very simple procedure. Um, and the, one of the highlights of the E2 program is that you don't have to give your money to anybody else to invest for you. You get to open a business of your choice in a location of your choice anywhere in the United States. So let's say you can either set up a branch or a rep office of what you currently do in South Africa. You can open up a completely new business or you can invest in a franchise. Either way, whichever way that you choose, your money is controlled by you. It's in a business that you own. You can also become partners with somebody else who has an up and running business in the United States. You, however, need to own 50% of that business. The investment amount for that falls anywhere between one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand okay. dollars. The E two granted to Grenadian citizens is a five year visa with unlimited number of renewals. So as long as the business that you've invested in is up and running and still functioning, you will get your E two renewed unlimited number of times. So basically for life, and so it allows your spouse. So whoever is not the main applicant, whoever doesn't own the business, to work anywhere else that they choose within the United States, your children get to go to school, you get free schooling in the United States, and when they go to university, they get in-state tuition. Madam, can I just ask a clarifying question? Let's say I now hold the Grenadian uh, citizenship. I can apply from Grenada into the US. I don't have to come back to South Africa. No. To apply. So, so it's recognized on that passport as well. And just yes. for clarification, I can go and open any business that is legal in the US without having to give my money over to a third party to invest. But you have the freedom of investment. You can open your own business, you can own a franchise, or you could do something else. But you're investing in yourself, like you say. Yes, that's exactly what it is. So anywhere that you choose that you want to live in, you can also work in. There are, there are clients that say, you know, I have X, Y, and Z business in South Africa, and I want to have a branch in the States to trade in between, for example. And they're allowed to do that. The beauty of the E2 program is time. So you're looking at six to 12 weeks. The application goes through an embassy, any embassy that you choose. 
most of our clients have chosen to do it via the U.S. Embassy in Barbados because even though Grenada doesn't require a investor to reside or visit the island, it is always advisable that they do go and visit the island after they become citizens to familiarize themselves with their new country and their new country of citizenship, and then apply via the closest embassy, which is in Barbados. However, that's just what we've seen happen more regularly with people. It's not a requirement. They can apply from any U.S. embassy that is their choice. Excellent. So, Thank you. We have a question where someone said, is this program just for USA or is it available for UK as well? Um, I, I'm, I'm assuming they're mentioning that can anyone can apply for this program as long as they're not a Canadian citizen and um, so for them to go get to the U.S. So uh, what Ma Mary was kind of saying is what we re recognize Ashraf is a lot of the South Africans want to be more in control of their destiny. They want to live and work. They kind of want to um, set up their own business. They kind of want to run their own business. It's not like we have a high proportion of multi-billionaires in South Africa. They still want to go and expand the business. And with the Grenada program, it gives you that option. And so they can get a passport. So what Mariam's saying is there's a big difference. It's not a residency. It's actually a citizenship where people do it, why people go for Portugal, it's a residency program. So you have to be, you have to get that residency for five years. With Grenada, it's actually a fast track option to get a citizenship where you can actually tangibly get a passport. So if people on this, um, on this webinar are not aware, aware of where Grenada is, Grenada is one of the tiny islands, or I wouldn't say tiny, but one of the islands um, in the Caribbean, and the best way to describe it is if South Africa is playing West Indies, West Indies is broken down with a number of islands that create the West Indies. And actually, Grenada has the highest, um, you know, um, they, they're, they're doing very well when it comes to the economy of the Caribbean. And it's a fast track to get another passport. And then, of course, um, get an E2 visa. Um, so therefore, when you do the E2 visa, you can actually either invest in a partnership to run a business, or if you want to run your own business, so you, you could have, I don't know, you could be selling, um, I don't know, um, powder products to um, Indian restaurants or commercial businesses, or you might have a service, any kind of service, but you can actually sell that service to the US market. It's a faster way of doing this. Um, well, let me just add, Sam, that South Africa enjoys a duty-free arrangement in terms of a treaty known as AGOA with the US. So goods manufactured in South Africa can be exported duty-free to the US. Of course, they're selling their chickens here in turn. Okay. So we, we can export our stuff to them. A very good market for textiles. African, yeah. African, anything to do with Africa, you know, there's a big uptake about African roots and things. So you'll be well advised to do some Look, there, there's a number of large Indian businesses already operating out of South Africa into the U.S. I don't want to mention names, but very, very large brands and very, very successful. Yeah. So it's actually interesting that Ashraf touches uh, that point, which is, um, thank you for that. I, I didn't know that about South Africa and the United States. So basically right now for a South African to do business with the U.S., it's duty free. However, having a South African citizenship limits them from being able to set up shop as a counterpart to, them, to their own selves within the United States. With a Grenadian citizenship, if someone wants to, for example, not move and not live full time, they open a branch or a rep office of their own business in the state and they can trade between South Africa and the United States while being in control of their money. And in and the you, meantime, because they have citizenship, that may be the choice of the head of the family who may be the father or the mother. But the children have a, it, it's a wonderful level of freedom where they get to travel the world visa-free and they get to therefore choose where else they would like to live. Because when a Grenadian has, as someone's mentioned here, if it's just for the US or available for the UK, there isn't an E2 visa for the UK, but when you are a Grenadian that has visa-free access 
to the United Kingdom for six straight months, consecutive months, as a, as a Commonwealth national, setting up a business in the United Kingdom is that much easier for a Grenadian than it would be for a South African, for example. We find a lot of Chinese that are doing the Grenada program as they did the St. Kitts and Dominica program just because they want to send their children to the United Kingdom as a Commonwealth national so that they don't hit that quota. And they get preferential university fees depending on the university. Um, but then there's no longer the question of getting like we not get a student visa will they renew it will they not renew it i had a client here in the uae um syrian national who got his student visa for a four-year university program in the united kingdom after the first year the visa didn't get renewed so then everything breaks the next three years that he's meant to be university, the year that he's already done there, the transfer of courses, the, the, the whole system gets broken down. But once you are a citizen of a country that has so many visa-free access countries on it, you are in a position of choice and power. So whether you choose to pursue your dreams in the United States and apply for an E2 and open up your business there, you're still not limited to wanting to pursue that within the, within the Schengen areas or within United Kingdom. Just slightly in a different way because they don't have a specific E2. And another thing that works really well, we found for clients that are very much interested in Grenada uh, is the university in Grenada. So Grenada has a university called St. George's University. St. George's University is a very well-known and recognized university in, North, in the North American region. They have a medical school, a veterinary school. They do um, business MBA programs as well. However, the highlight of it is for their medical school, they are linked up to the U.S. and they are also linked up with the United Kingdom. When a student graduates from St. George's University Medical School in Grenada, they can practice medicine in the United States without needing to do the exam or without needing to go through any other process. So they graduate today from St. George's, tomorrow they can do their residency in the United States. Just this year, the St. George's University has um, given 990, if I'm not mistaken, or if it's, or it's nearly 1,000, it's on their website, which I will share with you, um, residents to the um, hospitals of the United States. So, in, therefore, their children are no longer limited. So, if they study medicine in South Africa, they are quite limited. If they want to pursue that in the US, they have to study and do an exam again and so on and so forth. This takes off that limitation where they can practice in the US. As that's a great. Grenadian that's graduated from St. George's. So Marion, we, we, you've explained to us about the entry to Grenada where they can get a citizenship and then eventually um, they get a, a wonderful um, you know, investment into um, your luxury resorts that has a track record from St. Kitts and Neves as well as Dominica, and now you're doing Grenada. What is the exit strategy? Because, you know, a lot of people in South Africa are very concerned about the risk element because it's a lot of money when you sure. put that money into US dollars. And, um, you know, that is the entry. What, what's the exit strategy? And how, you know, how much, you know, tell us about the money being at risk because that's one of the biggest concerns South Africans have. The investment in the, in the project is $220,000 for one equity share. As mentioned earlier, and if uh, for people that have just joined or recently joined, you only need to invest in one share for your entire family to be eligible to get a second citizenship. You pay government fees, but they range somewhere between around seventy dollars to $100,000. The $220,000, you're locked in for a period of five years. You, are, you have invested in a hotel. Once the hotel is up and running, you drive profit from your investment, estimated between 3 to 5% for the first two years. And from there onwards, it picks up. Hotel investments are very conservative, but they're very, very safe. 
because it's not just any property. You've got a five-star international brand who's audited and so on and so forth, taking over and managing on your behalf. Um, I would also like to mention when we tell people it's $220,000, you are not eligible to pay anything else after that. So there's no service fees, maintenance fees, management fees. There's none of that that applies to an investor. Um, you're locked in for five years, five years from the day that you get your citizenship, which would be six months from today, let's say if you started today, you are able to resell your investment. So just the way that you are investing in a five-star hotel, which is off plan at the moment, and getting a citizenship five years from today, a second buyer who will buy your share from you will have a ready-made hotel, obviously already driving profits, tangible property, with the opportunity to also apply for a second citizenship while you retain yours. So if you're locked in for five years and you sell after five years, you don't lose your citizenship. And um, also bear in mind, the number of shares in each hotel are a limited number. Hence why government approved project. So this project has 575 shareholders as, and it's capped by the government. Right now, we don't see any other five-star hotel development coming up in Grenada. So because it took us around a year and a half, two years to get here with the government and become an approved project, best case scenario, the next project would start in around a year and a half, two years time. So five years from today, you will be the only investor who has the ability to sell a share within a ready-made five-star hotel that grants a second passport to the second buyer and with a limited number of 575 in the world i think your chances are pretty high and we have seen that already with our first project in st kitts and nevis we have a lot of our clientele coming to us saying you know yes we understand that you have the dominica option we understand that there's the grenada option as well however we want visa-free travel, we want a second passport, but we will pay a premium for your Park Hayat project in St. Kitts and Nevis simply because it's ready. So we put them in touch with the initial buyer and the sale happens and then whether they want us to do their paperwork or to have another immigration law firm do their paperwork is completely up to them. Actually Marion, that's a very important point because I remember addressing an audience and explaining the Grenada program and certain investors and the agents said, well, I could just go and buy another um, uh, real estate or another property in Grenada and sell that after five years. But I think it's important that um, audience understand that you can't necessarily just go and buy uh, any um, real estate or any developments out in Grenada it has to only go through an approved agent or an authorized um, real estate, which you guys are. So for people to take this option, they have to go through um, government approved agents, which the government actually has carried out a, a number of due diligence on your plan and also on your track record in order to make sure you guys get the reduction by 220. Um, can you just re reiterate to people, it's not just they can go to Grenada and just buy any development. They actually have to go to an approved development, which you guys are, are the ones that actually allow it to be sold at 220. Yes, um, you can't just go there and apply to whatever it is that you may choose. It, if you, you can invest in Grenada, you can invest in anything that you like, but that investment doesn't give you a citizenship. In order to get a second passport and a second citizenship, you need to invest within a government approved project and yes. the number are very limited and they will always be limited because there's a lot of terms and conditions as the government doesn't want to hand out their citizenship which is quite powerful to just you know someone that came and bought a little piece of land somewhere randomly on the island your investment needs to help the island just the way the citizenship helps you your investment needs to create jobs and help the islands. These islands are very, very beautiful and they're very, very small, as Sam mentioned. And tourism is their main source of business, hence why the hotels.
So when the Caribbean cruises from North America and the Caribbean cruises from the UK head out to the Caribbean, they don't stay overnight and they don't indulge in the islands that don't have five-star properties. They want so, to expand that because tourism is the main form of income. Okay, so please keep your questions coming. So Ashraf, I just want, we've heard about from Miriam regarding uh, the Grenada and the citizenship program and as well as the E2 and the fast track. Now, how do you see this being received to um, actually families and the H&Is um, in South Africa? Um, you, know, you know, how would you, put it in a few words, how they can look at this in, in order to move forward? Because we know they're very keen to die, you know, migrate out. Well, in my recent conversations with a number of people, primarily business people, almost without fail, every single one of them did not know of the Caribbean program. They did not know of the advantage over the EB-5s. They did not know of the fact that you can actually not even live in the Caribbean to be a citizen there. And nor did they know of the fact that, let's say, for example, comparing to EB-5, EB-5 return on your investment is 0.5% and if you're lucky, one. Here's a, here's a program that says to you, there are only 575 limited partners in this thing. And you're getting a five-star hotel in a in an island that the big, uh, uh, air, uh, big lines visit at least uh, as frequently as we know. I mean, anyone who's been on a Caribbean island cruise, or if you've been to the US, there's one almost on a weekly basis. So, and then there is a very strong footprint of previous developments here. Then there's a possibility of onward sales of your share in a completed brick and mortar resort, which is not, you know, it's not pie in the sky. This thing is, is real. Then the biggest advantage you have at, um, in terms of time, you're getting it in five to six months. Uh, and there's a deposit, you know, you can place a deposit down. You don't have to go for the whole amount. There are limited legal fees. Um, and, and a child is uh, under the age of 30 is, is dependent on you, which is a very, very big thing. So it's, it's just not you, the principal person, but your wife and your children, uh, unmarried children, including siblings, if they are single and your parents over the age of 55, I think this is a, a huge, huge offering that has not been sold into the South African market. So in a way, I would suggest that people are ignorant about it. It hasn't been marketed in the same, along the same strength as the EB-5s and the Portuguese golden visas. There are other European countries that you can look at, but for the buck, bang for buck that you're getting here, I think very few programs could possibly beat it. Great, okay. So if I'm really keen on doing this Grenada program and uh, as well as looking at this C2 option, what are the next steps? Me? Uh, for for Grenada, first and foremost, a client will put down a refundable deposit of $22,000, which is 10% of the 220. Mm -hmm. Then they pay their legal fees and due diligence fees and processing fees. For an average size family, that's around $50,000. So um, we prepare their file, we prepare all their documentation, whether they're in South Africa or anywhere else in the world. And um, we do all their notarization and attestation and so on and so forth. Um, everything needed in a file, a client more or less has already. They already have it at home. We just need to organize it for them and do their paperwork. For them. We submit their file into the government, providing that that individual, the main applicant of that individual, has is able to prove that they don't have a dodgy background. They haven't been wanted for fraud, money laundry, or any other kind of crimes. And their businesses haven't been involved in criminal activities. Get their approval from the government within around five, five and a half months. Once the official approval comes from the government, we provide them with the official approval. They pay the remaining amount, whatever it is. So let's say if it was $300,000 for their family and they paid 50 in the beginning, then they pay the remaining 250. 
Once they pay the remaining 250, it takes around four to six weeks to get their physical citizenship, their physical passports, and their certificate of naturalization, as well as their share certificate in the hotel, which obviously is proof and is registered within the registry that says so and so owns one equity share of this resort, which is going to resell five years from now. And that's it. So within six months, providing that they are of a clean background, nationality, religion, sect, none of that applies. None of that is a hindrance. It's just your background. And bear in mind, the reason you do the just on you is because you haven't lived there. Um, there's no background review in Grenada. So they do that. And within six months, you get changed. Once you get it, you six to six weeks to around twelve weeks to get your E two if you choose, and whether you choose to do your E two immediately or not, and move to the states immediately or not, there's no restriction on that. People choose to start immediately. Some people choose to start five years from now because the shares are limited. They do their investment now. They get their. Mariam, I think we've lost Mariam. I think that we've lost Mariam. Can I just come in there while we're reconnecting with Mariam? Yeah. Uh, there's something very, very important in terms of South African law, which is the following. If you are a citizen of the Republic, yeah. and no. by a voluntary act, sorry, Mariam, I, we lost you, so I'm just filling in something. Oh, okay. There. So, let me just bring in two very important legal riders here. The first being, a South African citizen may not acquire citizenship of another country until he does the following. Apply to retain South African citizenship, obtain the consent, and then apply for citizenship of another country. Otherwise, you're on the risk of automatically losing South African citizenship. The second important thing is, if you're a holder of dual passport, you can only enter and leave the Republic on the South African passport. And if you travel anywhere else, you can use any other passport, but your entry and exit into the Republic is governed by the South African passport. So given the tight time limits that, or very promising time limits that you can possibly get your Grenadian citizenship, I would suggest anyone that is interested in acquiring this gets in touch with the responsible person who knows how to do these things and start getting the application to retain South African citizenship and get that letter before you embark. Given the time period that you've given, South African Home Affairs takes much longer than that. So if you intend to go, then do that. William, I wanted a clarifying question. If I'm an asylum seeker in South Africa, and my country of origin is either Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nigeria, China, anywhere else, am I entitled to apply for this program from South Africa? Yes. Country of origin, religion, nationality, sect, none of that matters when it comes to obtaining a Grenadian citizenship. The only place of birth, none of that matters to them. The only thing that does matter to them and they take very seriously is due diligence on that individual's background. So if that person's background is clean, meaning no criminal activity, no none of the you know money laundry, fraud, tax evasion, they're not wanted anywhere for anything bad, they are granted a Grenadian citizenship. They're not judged on where they were born or how any of that stuff it goes back to who you are and how you've made your money just the fact and that is simply because they don't get to see you you don't have to visit the island to get your citizenship you can do it while you're sitting in south africa so that six months period that we're talking about is just internationally due diligence done on who you are and what your companies are and um we find for example that employees are usually given an approval faster or something than employers because it's very easy to point out their source of wealth, for example. So it has nothing to do with where you're from. Okay, thank you for that. Well, I, I, look, I, I'm sure there's a lot of um, people on this webinar that have a few more questions. We have your details. 
um, Mariam and Ashraf will reach out to you. One of the reasons why we wanted to have Mariam and Ashraf on this webinar was because Mariam can give a proper insight on how the Grenada citizenship works and as well as exciting new um, developments in regards to the price reductions at 220 and the E2 visa. And as well as Ashraf, who represents a very reputable firm in South Africa, where they can reach out to you. Uh, I know we've done a lot of flyers. They can reach out to you where you can send them further information regarding this program. And you know, if it needs to be, they can always come to your office and then you can do another, I guess, Skype call or you know, WhatsApp or whatever is required in order to connect with Mariam. So you know, we, we know the situation out in South Africa. A lot of people don't feel safe. There's a lot of um, you know, increase in crime. And it's one of the, one, one of the most dangerous um, cities to be in. So if you do have the capital and the investment, there are proper routes to migrate out overseas. And this is like one of the most um, appealing routes now um, in comparison to the developments that are taking place in the market, especially with US CB5. So um, we don't want to hold them for too long. Is there anything else you would like to add to um, this webinar? to our attendees and um, and then we can wrap it up. Who is that directed to? Both of you, sorry, both panelists. Lady, ladies first, Marie. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Ashraf. Oh, just in a nutshell, um, thank you for attending. Thank you, Ashraf, thank you, Sam, very much. Uh, Summary version, the Grenadian citizenship is granted within six months, providing that the client has a clean background. It gives you visa-free access to 140 countries, including UK, Schengen, Hong Kong, Singapore, Russia, China. You have the option of applying for an E2 visa at any point in time after you become a Grenadian. And immediately after you are a Grenadian, your children can, if they are close to going to university, can enjoy studying at the St. George's University, which is internationally recognized, and then they can practice medicine in the United States immediately after, if they choose that med school is the way that they want to go. And um, that's about it. Ashraf, would you like to add a few words, please? Yes, um, I, I think if you take a leaf, um, just from, from the um, information that we've received here from Mariam, um, for example, if you're going to take a, a, a citizenship by investment for 500000 that money incubates there for the next five years. Here you're getting the same thing at half the price, and you still invest in your own business because you still have to put food on the table. You still have to pay the rates and taxes and electricity, and you put petrol in your car. So why lock the capital into somebody else's business when you invest in yourself? Secondly, this is, this is the only as Mariam said, the only, I mean, a pro, uh, uh, unique development in the world where you're building a five-star labeled hotel or resort. Uh, you know, you're, you're really a shareholder in that. You, you're one of 575. Few people can boast of that. You know in five years' time, if you, if you want to sell and liberate your capital back into yourself, you don't lose your citizenship. You still be able to get your capital back and you had some growth in this industry, and you can carry on. For me, honestly, it's, uh, I, I wasn't aware of the depth of this. It's a very serious thing for people to give considerations, A, in terms of time, B, in terms of cost and availability, and C, in terms of what you can access with this particular passport. Uh, I mean, Russia and the UK. Let me tell you about the UK. Right now, South Africans require a visa to go to the UK. They can reject you for any number of reasons. It cost you 1,800 rands. There were two incidences last week. Manchester United, he got refused. He lost that whole 23,000 rand package. Gone. Long-term visas to the UK, 8,400 is the visa fee. So weigh things up, you know, and, and have a clear identity. The big thing is uh, South African universities I'm not accommodating all of the medical doctors. That's another new uh, route to get into the UK and the US. If you, if you study at St. George's, well, you can get in without writing the boards in the US. Am I right? 
You're eligible to practice as a doctor in the US, right? Yes, that's correct. That's big, correct. a big, big advantage. There are people sending their chi children to China. I have a daughter in China. They're sending their children all over the world just to get medical degrees and they come back and they still have to write US MLEs and, and the local boards. I wasn't aware of this. It's a very, very lucrative, I would suggest, avenue for people that have children that are passionate about medicines and are not accepted locally for various reasons. Excellent. Excellent. So um, thank you very much, guys. Um, I guess obviously people have a better understanding of the Grenada citizenship program as well as what range has to offer in regards to um, investing in the real estate option and of course the e2 visa and um, ashraf has also explained about the current status and the situation in south africa why um, investment immigration and outbound migration is becoming very um, popular to south africans um, you know ashraf is available he you know he, he is an established um, attorney and very reputable attorney is one of our panelists not just in webinars but also in conferences that we've hosted out in Joburg um, to give people a, a proper outline um, if they do want to migrate that how resource can get involved in helping them from A to Z to get in from putting in the application to actually get in approvals and of course Mariam's also there to make sure that if they do want to make an application She'll also be there to help make sure that um, paperwork and the due diligence is carried out correctly in order to get approval because um, the track record and the approval rates uh, actually, I think, for range is about 100% at the moment, which is fantastic. We know it's, um, there's no risk because you're putting money into a project checked by the government that are, the governments are happy to see that they have the capital and of course it's a faster route um, to the US by the E2 program especially with the EB5 investment going up and um, you know look, I, I can't thank the panelists enough Marion thank you so much um, I'm sure uh, you know we'll, we'll carry on educating the market about the Grenada options and Ashraf you know you're doing a phenomenal job in regards to educating not just South Africa the African market I guess you're more busy on outbound than inbound. So we want to keep you busy. And of course, um, if people want to reach out and have a one-to-one -one consultation with Ashraf or Mariam, they can automatically send us an email or request their details. And I'm sure they will reach out to you to make sure you know you 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 know you live the dream that you want to do and make sure you know you you invest in order to protect your family, safer neighborhood as well as your business and your assets. Yeah, so thank you very much, guys. Uh, wishing you a wonderful evening. I guess it's quite late. And um, thank you very much for all the people that have actually called in or actually joined the webinar. Uh, wishing you a wonderful day. So if you guys want to um, say your last, you know, want to make last comments before we leave, Ashraf and Mary, would you like to say anything? Just final comments before we leave? Uh, well, thanks to you for putting this together. Thanks for all the participants. Thanks to Miriam. Um, yeah, if we, we are here to answer your questions, if you want to hear, uh, if you have more clarity, but uh, thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Ashraf. Mariam, anything final? Goodbye? Thank you very much, Sam. Ashraf, it was a pleasure meeting you. Uh, we really enjoyed our conversations. And um, thank you for everybody taking part. And please, if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out and We'll help you along the way. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.